Hey there, you wonderful people. I hope you're all having a great week. Today, I wanted to do another Lightroom tutorial following on from the earlier tutorial videos I've been doing on Lightroom recently. And I wanted to do it on color calibration today and the calibration tool, how it works, what you can use it for, how you can use it to enhance your images and also get some quite creative looks from it. So let's jump into Lightroom and I'll show you how it works and what we can do with it. Okay, so this first image is just uh, uh, one I used for a thumbnail recently on a buyer's guide for RGB lights. Uh, if you haven't seen it already, I'll pop that video up here. And I'll put this up because obviously we've got blue, green and red. And I wanted to show you how this tool, the calibration tool, affects colour differently to things like the HSL tool. So. If, for example, I go down here to my HSL color tool and I uh, increase the red, you can see that all that's happening to this is that the red is going, is saturation is going up and down. Whereas if I come down to the color calibration tool, if I do the same with the red here, you will notice that not only does the red increase in saturation all of the other colors do as well to a lesser or greater degree so the same will happen with if i do the blue same thing happens you've got green and red and all the other colors and that is because if we hover our mouse over say the blue here you can see up in the top right there that it's about 70 percent blue 21% green and about 29% red. So that's the difference. It's actually affecting all of the colors rather than with the HSL slider, it simply affects the color um, that you choose like red or green. So that's something to note. If you're gonna use this tool, be aware that it will affect all of the colors in your image. And I've found that the best way to use it is on like landscape photographs um, but it does also work on things like portraits and product photography and um, I'll show you that in a minute I'll show you take you a few a few example images so this first one I shot last summer in Norway and um, this has got some edits done to it already as you can see and if I just go to how it looked to start. This was shot with the Sony RX100 Mark V. And as you can see, that was the image straight out of camera. That's what's, those are the changes that have happened to it. And then I'm gonna come down to color calibration here. And as you can see, you've got hue and saturation sliders for all of your primary colors. So red, green, and blue. You also have a tint slider for the shadows and what I like to use on landscape images in particular is the blue slider for saturation um, because it seems to affect the images uh, in a more pleasant and pleasing way. So if I just put this up to 100%, you'll see instantly how the kind of light changes in the image. So that golden glow that comes from whacking it up and obviously you're not always going to want to put it up by 100%. You may just want to kind of have a play around with it. But for this image, for example, I quite like it about 40, maybe 50. And then what I'm also going to do is just show you, actually I'll take it down and I'll show you what will happen. So with the green slider, you can see that that yellow is quite harsh and it's quite... Um, yeah, a little bit too much really and the same with the red if i do it with the red so i do generally find that the blue gives a slightly more balanced increase and let's take it to about 55 and then what i'll show you now is if you change the hue of the blue if you drag it one way it's going to go very green and if you drag it the other way it's going to go very red and if you want to as I do here, change the color of your sky. I remember this scene and I remember it being a little bit more kind of ready, magenta-y, 
compared to how it looks in this image. So I'm going to drag this over a little bit to the left by maybe about 20. And if we just do a quick before and after, that's what it looked like without the calibration tool added. And that's what it looks like with it. And as you can see, it just gives you a little bit more punch to your image. And obviously, some images you're going to want to do this on more than others. And um, I haven't touched really the vibrance and saturation up at the top on my main um, basic adjustments because I knew that I was coming down here to do this. So, and similarly, I haven't touched the HCL sliders at all either. So that's one example. I'll show you another shot that I took in Norway as well. Now this image, I've already made the adjustments to, so I'm just going to turn those off. And again, I've done some edits to this image. I've done some dodging and burning and some general adjustments and sorted out the sky a little bit. But as you can see, without the color calibration on, you can see that it, it looks decent, but it doesn't quite have the punch I want it to. And I really wanted to bring out the blue of the um, the fjord here where the boat is and also just the kind of parts of the image where the light is hitting the sides of the mountains I wanted to bring that out a bit so if I click the color calibration on you can see it really adds a lot of punch and actually I think that is a bit too much I've got that on 100% at the moment so if I just pull that back down a little bit maybe to about again about 60 and I really like that. I feel like it gives me what I want in terms of the fjord because it was a really bright day and the fjord was really bright turquoise. Um, now, I'm going to show you another image here. This is a shot that I took with um, the Sony a7S III and it's a shot I took for a thumbnail for one of my videos on the GoPro Hero 9. And again, I'm just going to show you what you can do creatively with this. I shot this in um, October and where I was, there was quite a lot of greens in the backdrop. And I actually wanted to have more of an autumnal look to the image, the final image. So what I did was I bumped up the saturation slider. And as you can see, as I do that, it changes all of the color there. And... You can also see on my arm there, the blue of my jacket goes a little bit oversaturated. So we'll talk about that in a minute. So if I pop that up to 70 and then what I did to get more of an autumnal sort of orange teal look was drag to the left again. And as you can see, it makes all of those greens go kind of a nice orangey brown color. And again, you could drag it right over and it, it looks pretty pretty horrendous in my opinion it looks quite false but what I wanted to do is just make it look autumnal and if you drag it across again by about 50% it gives you that kind of nice looking image and again you can change how your shadows look in terms of the tint maybe add a little bit of magenta tint and you can see what's happened on my glove here this is actually a, a black glove and a blue jacket but because there is some blue in those parts of the image they've kind of gone a bit oversaturated so what you can do is you can go into the HSL um, sliders and go to the blue and actually go to saturation and reduce the saturation because it's the only parts of the image that really have blue in them and it's affecting mainly just the glove a little bit on the GoPro but not much so just drag that back down and the same with the aqua a little bit and there we go, that is what I wanted for that particular image. And as you can see, you can get that kind of orange and teal type of look quite easily by using the color calibration slider. And one question that I had was whether this would work well on portrait images where you've got people's skin. And I have to say, you do need to be a little bit careful with it because it can make people's skin look very strange indeed. And as you can see on this image, again, I've done some general adjustments and we'll come down to the color calibration module. And if I turn it on, 
again it just adds quite a lot of punch to the image but as you can see when I do that this little boy's skin starts to go a little bit too red really and as I say you just need to be a bit careful with it because it can cause some issues for you and here again I've gone minus 20 on the tint to try and avoid the kind of redness in the skin which does help and again you can play with the sliders as to how much you want but again I wanted that kind of autumnal look and just to emphasize the autumn leaves in this image because this was shot again at the end of uh, October. Another shot here of a swan which I took um, locally and if I turn the calibration off this is what I got to with just doing general edits and I've got a couple of radial filters on the swan and what I wanted was the background here where I've got the of sunset reflections on the water I really wanted that to pop and by doing the color calibration again it just really makes those oranges and reds really pop and again I've gone to the left a bit with my hue slider and as you can see what happens when it goes the other way it's um, doesn't look right but yeah another one I'm going to show you this uh, shot of mountain biker. Um, I just want to show you what you can do. Obviously here I've played around with the HSL sliders because I really wanted to emphasize the red here on his clothing. Uh, he always wears red so I wanted to emphasize that. And then the blue as well I've pumped up a bit. But I could do that in a different way. If I switch that off, let's go down to calibration and I'm just going to reset all of this. So as you can see, if I push the blue to the right, it kind of affects everything, but his blue jacket just doesn't look quite right. And again, the same with the greens. So I quite like the idea of muting the greens in this image and just making sure that the rider and his clothing and the bike pop and everything else is kind of um, subservient to him in the shot. So what I quite like here is that you can reduce the saturation and make the green, rather than a kind of yellow green, make it a little bit of a sort of green rather than the yellows that it's had in the original image. And then push the blue up a little bit and then let's go back to our HSL sliders and turn those back on. And as you can see, I can emphasize that using these as well. And obviously you've also got color grading within Lightroom now, which I'm going to do a separate video on, but that, there's a lot to go over in that. So that's, um, that's what essentially is replaced split toning. So you've got lots of options, but I just wanted to show you this one, how you can kind of emphasize particular colors in conjunction with the HSL slider. I think that works quite nicely. And then finally, I just want to show you this image, which I shot in um, Sweden a few years ago. Um, I want to show you this one because a lot of the other ones have been shot on Sony cameras. That last one was shot on the Canon R5 and this one was actually shot uh, on a Canon 60D which I had at the time. And I just want to show you this because I'm not happy really with the tonality in this image to start with. Once I'd effectively changed like the white balance and the tint and all of the other kind of edits I wanted to make to this image. I'd reduced the blue down a bit and I wasn't happy with the kind of colour of these um, buildings, these huts, and I wanted them to look more kind of red rather than that yellowy orange colour. So again, if I switch the calibration on, what you can see I've done here is I've added the saturation in the blue slider and then I've gone over with it to the left, which again if you go too far you end up with that which just looks 
quite unnatural, but what I wanted to do is just create that kind of redness in the buildings, which is how they were. And I think, um, yeah, just because of the emphasis of the sun on, on those particular buildings, it just looked a bit odd. And as you can see, I also didn't like the fact that greens had a lot of yellow in them. So I've pulled that to the right to make them a little bit more muted, a little bit more natural looking and just reduce the saturation by 10. And then on this one, again, on the red, as you can see, if you go too far, it just looks horrible. And I think with any editing, this tool or any of the other Lightroom tools, you just need to play around with them, but try to keep it looking natural and not too over edited. And I think I really like the way this tool, you can play around with both the saturation and the hue of each of the colors and it can give you quite a different look. So obviously if you really want a stylized look, you can do that in this particular part of Lightroom, but yeah, I think that's, that's good. So yeah, those are just a few examples of the types of images you can change with this. I'm going to show you one last one, which is uh, a wedding image that I shot. And as you can see, I've gone quite um, drastic on this. This was a particular preset that I sort of created for this, um, for this wedding shoot for the outdoor shots. And as you can see in the calibration tab here, we're really far down on the blue saturation. I kind of did the opposite of what I've been showing you because I, I wanted a sort of a vintage faded look and yeah as you can see we're quite far over on the hue as well and we've played around with all of the colors and the tint and the HSL sliders as well but if I turn calibration off you can see what happens it's quite quite different um, but that's partly because I've played around with vibrance and saturation as well. And also in the tone curve, I've also adjusted the tone curve slightly and the reds and the blues. So that was quite a different process um, because I was doing a lot of other stuff before and balancing it with the calibration and it just yeah it, it just gives you a lot of flexibility and you can do do quite a lot to create different looks and different presets and i really really like this tool i think it's excellent now that lightroom has the color grading tool maybe i won't be using it quite as much um, because in here you can obviously adjust the mid-tones shadows and highlights so Perhaps I will use that more often, but I hope that's been helpful in just giving you a brief overview of the calibration tool in Lightroom, how you can use it, how it can enhance your images. And if you've got any questions, please drop them below and I'm always happy to answer them. Uh, if you want to see any other particular tools talked about in Lightroom or Photoshop, just drop it below. I'm going to try and do a series of videos over the next few weeks on both Lightroom and Photoshop and also try and get one of my mates to help me out with some Premiere Pro tutorials who is an editor and as always thank you so much for watching if you haven't already please do consider subscribing I make weekly videos like this one and also product reviews and other tutorials and I will look forward to seeing you next time.